right, welcome everyone to preparing students for the APCSA FRQs. Um, I would like to introduce you to one of our veteran teacher trainers, Paula Medina. Um, Paula actually has um, a lot of experience with computer science and teaching and also in the IT industry before teaching. And we do have uh, a couple of slides in here to introduce her as well. I wanna introduce myself. I am Robin Leslie. I was a teacher for 15 years in a high school in Indiana. And now I'm a professional development specialist with Code HS. And we also have Lindsay behind the scenes who is also a professional development specialist at Code HS. And she is going to be the one who is answering any of the questions that you type into the Q&A area. So if you have any questions while we go about anything at all, type those questions into the Q&A and Lindsay will get back to you. All right, so we are going to go ahead and pass it off to Paula, who is going to give you all the information you need about the FRQs, Paula. Hi, I'm Paula Medina, and I teach at in an urban school in Norwalk, Connecticut. I've been, I was an AP grader last year, and I've been teaching APA, I think, for three or four years. Um, just a little sidebar, if you want to go on to carol.off.the.grid and join our TikTok, that would be great. Our kids run a TikTok, and it's kind of funny. So today we're going to talk about how the exam's broken out. We're going to show you some resources. We're going to try to just explain how the F FRQs are graded and give you some review tips. All right, we're doing it on Zoom. I don't know if they need this. Um, do we all know what Code HS is? Um, when I started teaching here, I taught math for two years. I've been here eight years. And then our computer science teacher retired. And they said, hey, Paula, why don't you start the program? And of course, I didn't know what to use. I found Code HS, and we've been using it for six years. We win trophies. We, we have an advanced Java class. It's just the best thing. And we're on the free version. So I know a lot of you are on the professional version and I'm very, very envious. It's comprehensive, it keeps, you know, they, they code, I'm sure I'm, I don't know if any of you are new to Code HS, but you have the sandbox where they can experiment and then you have the curriculum, the lessons. And what I love about it is all their work is inventoried so they can go back to it, they can build on it and they never lose anything. And I think that is, Probably, and it's all in one place. And that is so powerful. So here we are. We're in April. No, we're March. <laughs> it seems like April, doesn't it? And our test is in May. And I don't know about you, I have finished all the units, but now I'm panicked. I'm like, yes, they appear to know everything, but how do I teach them just a little bit more to hopefully get them into a three, four, or five? So our test is May 8th and at noon, and some of the kids will be taking an exam right before it, which isn't the best. So the first part, part one, 40 questions, hour and a half, multiple choice. And basically it covers everything in the AP curriculum, including, including recursion, where they're gonna have to walk through um, snippets of code but that'll be the only place that recursion is tested. And there are a lot of good uh, multiple choice exams on the College Board website. I have opened up all mine to my kids and I say, okay, this week I expect you to have completed two of them. And I ask them to talk about that with their peers, figure out which areas they might be weak in. And the second part is the FRQ. Um, there are four FRQs. Last year, I graded FRQ 2. That's the class one. Um, the first one was the hardest. It had, had a method, but they, they do funny things with the methods. They add 
a lot of algorithmic programming into the method. So it can be very complex. Then the array, array list, the kids are always getting confused, which commands do I use? And the 2D array seemed to be an easier problem last year. So how do we get them ready? I'm assuming you guys have used um, a curriculum, whether it's code HS or not, but I use Mit Mitro, Nitro, sorry. Um, and I use the, the problems off of College Board. Question of the day is very important. And then a new thing that I've added is the FRQ Center from Code HS this year. Um, this is the resource hub. This will take you to the recesses, resources that are available. I'm not going to click on that, but you have the link so that when you were off of this presentation, you can go and examine that. Um, this screen I like because Code HS has given us all these problems that we can assign. And so if the kids, I like to ask the kids, what's, what are the topics that are hard for you in the, in the multiple choice? And if they say array list, then I give them a few algorithmic problems for that topic. And this is a great place to get those problems. And also, I like coding bat. I don't know if any of you use this, but I'm going to follow this link. And you can see my screen, right, Robin? They can still see it. Is that right? Uh -oh. Yes. OK. <laughs> And so if you go into these, I really love these problems. They give you all of these problems. And when you go in and you pick a problem, let's just pick one. It'll give you um, the problem with an example and a place where you can solve the problem. What I've been doing is I've been copying the directions and then they give an example of what the answer should be. And then I, and I copy this, I give them uh, the header. And then I put it on a piece of paper so that they practice writing it out. And I put them in teams of two so they review each other's work and then they go and they put it in Code HS. And I think this is probably one of the best things I've done for them this year. And I, I think it's really helping, but this is um, a very good website. Um, question of the day. I actually grade them on it, but I'm on the free version, so it's hard for me to tell what they've done. So I'll come, they'll come into class. I'll go, okay, everybody show me that you've done it. So I actually have to walk around the room. But I think this just helps them understand the language of the exam because this language can be very dense. And I, most teachers I've spoken with, they all agree that it's overly dense, but unfortunately our students have to practice reading it, dissecting it, and understanding it. So I love the question of the day. I have my principal's class doing it as well. And then we're gonna talk about the FRQ Center. And this is a beautiful thing. They've, I, I don't know how many questions are there, but over 20, right, Robin? different FRQs yes. over the over the prior years. And you can look at it either text-based, which I've done with a few of them, and I've actually printed out the text-based form of the question, and I've made them write it out, you know, longhand. Because that's where I find my kids are really good at coding. They're not necessarily good at presenting. And... So I, I found that has helped me a lot and it keeps it a little more interesting, I think, for the students because they get a chance, I don't know if I should say fail, they get a chance to fail and then they can talk to each other and then they can go and they can solve it and then they can share their solutions around the room. And so I, I just think that keeps the energy going. So I, I really like that. And here's just an example of how well laid out these materials are. So I don't know if you've ever tried, like last year I tried to 
I'd give them the FRQ and then I built this shell so that they could practice. But Code HS has done all of this for us. And it just takes a little practice going in and figuring out how to load them into your class and everything. But once you get that figured out, it will save you so much time. And Paula? for those, yes. Oh, I was gonna say, we do have some questions. If you want to, uh, we had one person ask where the students would get to the question of the day. And then we had um, someone else ask where they would find the FRQ Center. So the FRQ, uh, can you direct them to the code, the question of the day? Do you know where that is? Yeah, on the left-hand side in the navigation. Okay. So um, the way I told my students to get there was just um, Google it. Code HS, AP, you know, APCSA question of the day, and that would take them right to it because I don't know where it is on the... So I, so I can't explain. Did that. you want to share your um, code HS screen, or no? Do I do I have it on the free version? Yeah, th yeah, on the left hand okay. side in the navigation. Okay, let's see. I'm I don't have code HS up. That is not good. Sorry. <laughs> no Sorry. worries. That that way we can show them exactly how to get <laughs> to. Um, what Please you're forgive about. me. <laughs> No so if you okay, could we're... do me a favor and scroll down and then we'll look at the left hand side. Okay. You can click I'm that not... X to get rid of the new sidebar nav design. Go ahead and click that. This one? The X uh, down. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Keep All going. Right, so keep scrolling, yep. And eventually you'll see QOTD. There it is. There it is. So it's in a little bit different spot for students, but it is still in the left-hand side navigation um, and they can click right on that. Do you wanna click on it? Why not? Sure. There we go. Right. And so this is where students will see the question of the day for whatever course it is that they are signed into. So if they're signed into APCSA, they'll see the APCSA question of the day. Um, and then Paula, do you wanna click view? Let's take a look at today's question. Let's look at it. <laughs> and and I'm on the free version, I think, right this second. Yeah. There we go. So there is the question of the day for today. And you can see that students can click down below in the gray shaded areas with all of the dates and they can look at past questions of the day. So if that's a way you want to start your class off and do it as a bell ringer or something like that. Um, all of the question of the day questions will be on that left-hand side in the navigation area, and it says QOTD. And then the other thing that we wanted to show them was how to get to the FRQ Center. So if you want to go up into your toolbox. Awesome. And then under resources, you can see uh, there are APCSA resources. And then there's the APCSA FRQ Center. Um, yeah, go ahead and click. And then if you want to kind of show them around and we can even show them how to um, take a look at them and assign them to their classes. Okay. So uh, here, what I'd like to do, so here they have the question. It's, it's already you could actually print this out and give this to them, which is something I like to do because it ha makes them practice, you know, writing it out. And there's, I think I'm just, shall I just explain this? We may be going out of order, but does anybody object? Is that all right? You go ahead. <laughs> okay. So basically it's, it's a question, right? Came out of the 2022 year. And they have, they give you some general information and then they have questions. They have a part A, B, C, D, whatever, maybe just A and B. And each part is graded separately. So if they don't do anything in A, they can still get full credit for B. They just have to practice assuming that their A works. And sometimes that's hard for students as well. So, and then there's a B, there's examples, 
And so the kids just have to be taught to read every word and dissect it, kind of pull out the meaning of the question, if that makes sense. And then um, basically, so that's, that's the example they give, they've given us. And then when we go back, there's a scoring guide. So when I graded last year, it was very hard for me to get used to grading these things because I'm used to giving points for things that work. And my, my question that I graded last year was worth nine points. And one point was, um, did they use substring? If they didn't use substring, they lost a point, even if they did it in a different way. And then it was like, did they use dot length? If they didn't use dot length, they lost a point. So they can be very specific. So I always tell the kids, usually array, array less, you know, a substring, they want the dot length command. So you got to remember, you know, is it dot size? Is it dot length with the parentheses? So they have to be very aware of those things. Um, out of bounds errors. When they're going through a race, a race list, the, the students really should understand if I'm looking for the next position, what do I have to do so I don't go out of bounds? So I try to, to emphasize those. Um, if it generates, a, and this is pretty standard stuff. Um, so did they assign, but this is how they break up the scoring. So if the kids can get used to reading the scoring guide and scoring their own work, I think that helps them um, be able to, to build an answer that will at least get some points. So, you know, they'll ask for you to do a certain thing, like build an array with, let's say, 10 entries. Well, if you build that, you get the point. It doesn't matter if you put the right entries in necessarily. And so I've been trying to um, help the students understand that. Um, so these are really good to go through and try to just speak the lingo, if that makes sense. But I'm not saying this is easy because I think a lot of them, we as teachers would probably disagree with how they award points. Um, but these are excellent ways to help your class, you know, review and learn about this. So we have the scoring guide. Now you can assign them to your class. So let's try one. This is a different one. So, and this was confusing to me. Oops. At first, come on, let's go. But this first one is if you want the complete assignment given to your student. So that would include, and correct me if I'm wrong, Robin, I think it, it includes the text version, the runnable, so they could actually enter their code and test it, and the scoring guide, but not the solutions. Is that right, Robin? The teacher um, has access to the solutions, not the student. Yes, the teacher would have access to the solutions and the lesson plan that comes with it when it gets assigned to the course. Okay, good. Unless you're on the free version, then you don't get that. But it doesn't matter. You can Google the answers online. So let's see. So we're going to load the runnable. And then you can choose your course where you want to sign it, where you let's put it here. And then um, I think that's all I need to do, right? Did I do something wrong? Let's see. Yep, go ahead. Yep, go ahead. Yeah. And so now it's assigned. I don't. I don't know about the grading because again, I'm on the free version. But now it's been assigned assigned to my course. So what I wanted to do with this information for the students was to put them all out there, so that if someone is ahead and needs something extra, they could do it on their own, or I don't have to worry about timing for the students because I've and I see that some of my we all have this right you have the top five students that will do everything you assign they always get it right and they're always ahead so I try to put everything out there for them and then I have my middle 
that I have to watch. And then I have the lower that maybe are going to struggle. So if I at least have everything out there for the super achievers, I can devote more time to the other students. At least that's kind of the way I look at it. So I think this is wonderful. Please try it. I wish I would have found it sooner. I don't know. How long has it been available? Don't tell me five years. That'll <laughs> that make I me don't cry. Know. <laughs> That'll sure. make me cry. I won't tell you five years. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to switch back to this if you don't. I mean, did that answer the question? Was that okay? Yes. I, I definitely believe okay. um, we got it. Good. And so for people in the audience, please forgive me because we're going to skip a lot of slides now because I think we already talked about it, which is great, I think. So here it is. Again, just read it. We, we showed you this in live, real time. So, all right. Section two. We already, I don't know why, didn't we already have this one? Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, this is the same FRQ center that we went to. Now, some of the word, the verbiage is really terrible on these questions. And I have a lot of English language learners and it's just hard for them. But some of the things assume, so if you go over these words, these, their code just calls them task verbs, then maybe that might help students um, decipher the question that's really being asked. And I just, I should have, I think I'll, I'll post another link that I just got another slideshow today. And they were talking about how the students really need to organize and write an algorithm. And if they make mistakes to cross it out, don't erase. And I read that and I thought, how many times when I was grading last year, they had erased and written over it and I could not read it. And I tried and I tried, but I couldn't. And as a grader, I was graded on how fast I graded these things. So I couldn't spend a lot of time if something was extra messy or had been crossed out and erased and you just can't spend the time. So you have to assume it's wrong. So I think that's a really important part to get across to the students. Cross it out, keep it clean. Make your variable names uh, associate with the problem. Don't use X, Y, Z, because if they understand that graders are grading hundreds of these in, in hours, then they, they really have to make it easy for the grader. So underline that this is, this, this is very good advice. You know, figure out what they're asking you to do. You know, think about, anything that you've done in the past, any methods you might have, you know, remember those methods that you've written and remember how they're supposed to just have one purpose and then understand but what preconditions are and postconditions. Because a lot of my students, they'll add a lot of editing and I'll say, no, did you see this precondition? It's not going to come to you. They're trying to limit the code that you have to write. So that's one thing that I've been getting better at helping my students understand. And of course, keep an eye on the time and crossing out your work is better than erasing it. But I won't look at it. And they're divided into parts A, B, and C. I think we saw that on the question that we reviewed. And each part they can earn a nine on part C and a zero on A and B. And I also try to remind my students, I think it's 66% grade on this exam is a passing grade. So they don't have to get too crazy by getting sevens out of nines. That would be a good score. And again, this is pretty much common sense. Write neatly is very important. And tell them do not write notes to the grader because that just slows us down and then um, it's, it just slows us down and tires us out. Um, only use the classes they give you. If they give you a name, I mean, I remember on my class um, 
part that I graded, it had to have the class name exactly as they asked. That was worth one point. So if they only knew how to set up the class, then they got a point. And this is another example um, of grading. So I think we've touched on this. And if they ask, you see, this is a good one. Calls get title. They can't, they got to use that name. They have to understand that calling a method is referring to the method name. So I'm really trying, I know it sounds basic and sometimes I forget these basic things, but I really am trying to remind the students just so they don't lose one point because they were creative with the naming. Penal penalty points. I know this is in every, you know, every exam penalty points, but our instructions were penalty points are generally not given. The only thing I do remember is about penalty points is if you have dead code in a method, so the method's running and then you, let's say you have a return and there's, and everybody gets to that first return and then you have more code after that, you would lose a point. So they really don't want to have dead code. So if they were thinking of something else and then they figured out, oh, the return goes here, they should really, you know, you have to have discipline so that you would strike out any unused code. But that was the only penalty point that I remember ever giving. Oh, uh, parameters. It's not really a, a penalty point, but in my, I had again the class and it said, you got a point if, they had the parameters in the right order, but they had the wrong values, which I thought was crazy. But so they're really, they're really testing, do you know how to pass parameters versus does it work for the algorithm? And in, in my particular test, the last point was, does the algorithm work correctly? Which Okay, now I understand they're really trying, maybe they're trying to give a lot of points for the basics, I don't know, but it's just something to remember. And these are things that you won't, you won't be penalized for, you know, if they misspell something or if they get private and public confused, but that's, and you notice they're saying that's for local variable, you will be punished if it's in the class um, for the class variables. You need to have the private there. Um, length, I mentioned that. If you have extra brackets, but, but generally they're really, we should emphasize that the students should know the difference between square brackets and round brackets. So this is all, you can read this when you're ready. This is, I love this and I've been handing, oops, I love it so much, I'll skip it. Um, I handed out this to my class to remind them that these are just the, um, are the method headers, right? Or the method signatures. And my students sometimes forget how to read those because we're so used to just writing code. We, you know, and so they, so I really have them go through this and read this. What does this mean? And have them explain it. And I am hoping that's gonna help them with the method work on the test. I'm hoping, but all this right. is a- Oh, sorry. Um, I was just gonna say, we have about a minute left. Uh, oh boy. Is there, is okay, there so anything that you wanted to make sure that you hit? before we let everyone go. Uh, we've done all this here. This is um, some, I guess the prior teachers examples. So there's a problem bank, that's good. We've gone through this and we went through that. We went through that, we went through that. Sorry, all out of order, but we did it. Here's another good example from College Board and tips. I think we've covered a lot of tips. Practice writing algorithms. I think that will really help because that'll remind them, oh, I added it there. That's good. And we've covered all this. Look for the problems. Uh, 
Um, and this is basically, I think all this is common. I think if you just went through the rest of the presentation, it's, it's you know, some good information here. Nothing earth shattering. These are good. <laughs> yeah, a lot of transposition I, we saw when we graded. Um, write legibly. Don't, don't re-implement. If you're in part B, you have to assume you can feed the method that you didn't write in A. That's really important because if they fuse the two, um, they may not get credit for either part just because it's hard to tell what they meant. Do not do fancy. I have a lot of advanced kids. I know I'm going over time. Sorry. A lot of advanced kids that like to do the advanced stuff that's not in the curriculum, do not do that. Because as I found that, if I knew it, I could give the point. But if I wasn't familiar with that, I first started out putting it in code HS and testing it. And then I realized I didn't have the time to do that. So really just stick with the curriculum and that will help your score. Um, there we go. I think we finished. All right. Um, thank you very much. I did put a link to some more free events that we're having. Uh, you can always go to codehs.com forward slash free PD. And I put that in the chat. And if you could go to the next slide. Yep. And then we do have a virtual teacher conference coming up and it's totally free to go to the uh, virtual conference. Attendees will receive a Code HS Pro trial, a gift card, a digital swag bag, all sorts of good things going on at this conference. There are several sessions to choose from. It's April 13th from 1030 to 2 Central Standard Time. And I did put that link into the chat as well. So if you want to click on that and register, you can. And then the next slide. And that is just our learn more slide. So if you happen not to be using Code HS and you tuned in today and you're thinking that maybe you want access to the FRQ Center or any of the other things that you saw today, um, feel free to check us out at codehs.com forward slash learn more. And I wanna thank everyone for coming. We appreciate your time. We hope you found this valuable and you got a lot of great information from Paula. She is amazing. And we will see you again next time. Bye everyone. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Bye.